Today I'm going to talk to you about the anatomy of salivary glands. To start with, you need to uh, know that uh, we have three major salivary glands, which are protein, submandibular, sublingual, and minor glands, which are palatin and labial in the lips, lingual in the tongue, and buccal. So all of these are salivary glands. Then the function of salivary glands, as you know, lubrication, okay, also digestion, like enzyme, like amylase secreted in salivary secretion and uh, participate in the process of digestion. Three, disinfection and also like protection of teeth protection of teeth so this is the major function of salivary glands we're gonna start with major salivary glands and the anatomy of parotid gland today and uh, before i go for the detail of each gland we need to know that parotid gland, which is the largest one, is the serous submandibular, is mixed, serous and mucus, then sublingual is primary mucus gland. Okay? Parotid gland. We will cover several aspects for each gland, including important relation and the nerve supply. When it comes to parotid gland, you know where it is located. It is located, okay, in relation to the ramus of the mandible, okay, and behind here there is mastoid process where sternocleidomastoid is attached, okay. So you will see that the gland extending and covering the muscle here, which is masseter on the ramus of the mandible, and the gland extend and covering all this area, extending below and behind the ramus of the mandible. Okay. And the top area here related to the auricle. And this is sometimes we call it parotid region. Parotid region. So it's covering the mandibular ramus and the masseter and also sternocleidomastoid behind. In this area you will find posterior pili of the gastric, stylohyoid muscle. So the apex of the gland, this is the apex of the gland, extend down to the submandibular region. The apex of the gland extend to the submandibular region. So important relation of the gland, if you cut the gland, and you will see that the gland is crossed inside by three major structures. And here is superficial part of the gland, deep part of the gland. The superficial part of the gland, you will see it is crossed by facial nerve, then facial vein, retromandibular vein, then we have the external carotid artery, external carotid artery. So those are the three major branches inside the gland. This is superficial loop, and this is deep loop, and this is facial nerve, then retromandibular vein, And the deepest structure will be external carotid artery. External carotid artery. Facial nerve inside the gland, facial nerve which is coming, the, 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 the unique relation of facial nerve to the gland, here is the stylomastoid foramen, and the facial nerve coming, penetrating the posteromedial surface of the gland, then split inside the gland into the five terminal divisions and you know what are those divisions the divisions are temporal zygomatic buccal 
marginal or mandibular and cervical this is facial nerve so the facial nerve here is a mastoid process styloid process deep hair then in between there is a stylomastoid foramen and the facial nerve inside the gland is going to divide into the five terminal division temporal zygomatic buccal marginal then cervical and we discussed the branches of facial nerve before so if you notice that the gland the medial surface of the gland can be divided into two parts antromedial this part here this is the antromedial covering the ramus of mandula and the masita and the masseter postromedial which is covering mastoid styloid process and deeper to styloid process you will find the carotid canal and the hypoglossal canal jugular canal so basically base of the skull in this area there is important structures passing through carotid canal jugular canal hypoglossal canal then stylomastoid foramen you will see to make it easy what are major structures through these canals internal carotid artery internal jugular vein last four cranial nerves internal carotid artery internal jugular vein last four cranial nerves so this is the posteromedial surface so the posteromedial surface of the gland behind the ramus of the mandible as you see covering important area in the base of the skull this important area where you have vital structure crossing this area including last four cranial nerve internal carotid artery internal jugular vein anteromedial very simple ramus of the mandible and the masseter okay so facial nerve divide the gland surgically into superficial loop and the deep loop so if there is any tumor in the superficial loop you can remove this loop by lobectomy dissecting this loop but you need to make sure that our important landmark is the facial nerve okay similar if there is any problem with the deep loop again is the most important landmark and to make sure that we don't hit this nerve which is facial nerve and you know the sequence or the consequence of facial nerve injury in this area how about parotid duct parotid duct extending from the anterior border of the gland and reach to the vestibule of the mouth penetrating the vaccinator and the open upper opposite upper second molar maxillary second molar okay this parotid duct so parotid card duct extend from the anterior border cross over vaccinator muscle and the penetrating the vaccinator muscle surrounded by accessory gland and lymph nodes then penetrating the vaccinator and open in, into the vestibule of mouth opposite upper second molar or maxillary second molar okay surface anatomy of the duct is very simple like if you want to draw a line that represents the duct if you have here is the auricle this is the mouth angle of mouth okay then the nose here if you extend the line until midway between ala of the nose and the angle of the mouth middle third of this line representing the duct so this is angle of mouth ala of nose tragus this is the landmark middle third of this line represents the parotid duct middle third will represent the parotid duct nerve supply which is very important the nerve supply is the important thing and we need to emphasize it nerve supply of parotid gland 
the most important nerve usually for salivary gland is the parasympathetic where it comes from to make it easy all salivary glands supplied by facial nerve except parotid by cranial nerve 9 p mirror image of p is what 9 cranial nerve 9 the mirror image of p is 9 so this is glossopharyngeal nerve so if i ask you what is the nerve supply of submandibular is going to be facial sublingual facial okay and even lacrimal gland which is not salivary but another exocrine gland in the head is going to be facial so all glands in the head will be supplied by facial nerve except barotted by glossopharyngeal nerve how glossopharyngeal nerve send branch to barotted its long path starting from inferior salivatory nucleus okay in pawn in medulla okay this is in medulla then here is the glossopharyngeal nerve sending branch called tympanic branch tympanic branch pass through tympanic canaliculus in the base of the skull at the margin between carotid canal and the internal jugular uh, or jugular canal then this tympanic canaliculus takes this nerve to the inner surface of tympanic membrane to participate in what we call it tympanic plexus tympanic plexus this is tympanic plexus and from there this gloss uh, lesser superficial vitrosal nerve through the anterior surface of petrous bone come out passing through foramen ovale then stop in otic ganglion so this is foramen ovale this nerve coming from tympanic plexus is called the lesser superficial petrosal and here is the otic ganglion and the postganglionic fiber is going to join this nerve coming from mandibular v3 this nerve is called auriculo temporal nerve auricular temporal nerve then again the postganglionic fiber travel with auricular temporal nerve to parotid gland parotid gland keep in mind now that this auriculotemporal nerve which is coming from mandibular division of the trigeminal okay this is the sensory supply of the gland so this is the black one is sensory supply carry sensation from the gland the green one this is the parasympathetic supply or secretomotor fiber secretomotor fibers so this is simply representing the nerve supply of parotid gland starting from inferior salivatory nucleus in medulla okay brain stem here is glossopharyngeal nerve sending this tympanic branch through tympanic canaliculus in the base of the skull enter petrous bone through the anterior surface of petrous bone is coming out as lesser superficial petrosal nerve lesser superficial petrosal nerve pass through foramen ovale then this preganglionic fiber stop in the otic ganglion postganglionic fiber is going to join auriculotemporal nerve a branch from the posterior subdivision or sub posterior division of mandibular then carried to parotid gland okay this is the nerve supply how about blood supply the blood supply simply to remember the blood supply go back what are the structures inside the gland which artery inside the gland external carotid so external carotid which divide here into two branches superficial temporal and maxillary 
superficial temporal and the maxillary those three arteries are the source of blood supply of the gland superficial temporal maxillary artery external carotid artery and keep in mind that the venous drainage is going to be by retromandibular vein one important thing i would love to emphasize that face in general does not have deep fascia except in two area the area over paxinator paccopharyngeal fascia and over parotid gland you have parotid fascia so parotid fascia considered as extension from deep cervical fascia deep cervical fascia so parotid fascia and it's forming the capsule very tight that's why infection inside the gland and the swelling of the gland usually is very painful why because the fascia is very tight and the capsule very tight so any swelling put a huge pressure on the nerve supply like orocrotemporal nerve and lead to severe pain one infection like mumps and this is viral infection common in kids and also cyanidinitis or like uh, inflammation of the gland in general okay is one thing so keep in mind this fact that the gland covered by second lymphatic drainage of the gland you have lymph nodes related to parotid gland we call it parotid lymph nodes we call it parotid lymph nodes parotid lymph nodes so parotid lymph nodes here you have superficial and deep deep lymph nodes go directly to deep cervical and superficial drain eyelid drain oracle and the drain also parotid itself and the parotid lymph node keep in mind that can be first sign of infection in the eyelid first sign of infection inside the gland first sign of infection in the external auditory meatus etc so you have parotid lymph nodes related to parotid gland and don't get surprised if you see even in breast cancer you might find this parotid lymph node enlarged because again lymphatic visits travels along the vein and if you trace this retromandibular vein you will find this retromandibular vein posterior division join external jugular vein which is going down to the cervical lymph nodes and apical lymph nodes of the breast so i the bottom line this lymphatic system around the parotid gland can be if there is any inflammation or if there is any tumor you might find enlarged parotid lymph node okay thank you